Hi, this is Rachel, and we're going to be looking at the volumes of shapes. So I have four shapes here. I've got a cuboid, I've got a pyramid. I know they're terribly drawn, I do apologize, um, but this is a pyramid. It's actually a rectangular base pyramid. I've got a cone and I've got a sphere, which I've tried to show with this terrible shading, um, but pretend it looks 3D. So let's start with the cuboid. So with cuboids and cubes, um, the rule works exactly the same. We can just multiply the bottom length of a face by the height of the face by the depth of the shape. So we can just do five times five times five. And that works with cubes and cuboids. So five times five times five is 125. And this time I've got my units times units times units. That means it's units cubed. So my volume of this cube is 125 centimeters cubed. Another shape I could have that actually the rule works with this one as well. But if I had, for example, a triangular prism. So essentially a cube or cuboid is a square or rectangular prism. So this is a triangular prism. So we can use the same rules for both really. So the volume of a prism is the cross-section area, cross-sectional area multiplied by the height. Sorry, not height, <laughs> length. So it's the cross-sectional area multiplied by the length. So with a triangular prism, the cross-sectional area is the area of that triangle. So a cross-section is if I would take the shape and cut it like a loaf of bread. And the area would be of that exposed um, side. So taking my bread analogy again, it'd be the white bit of the bread, not the crust. And the same is true of this cube or cuboid, they both work the same. So I've got my cross-sectional area, which is that bit there. So I find the area of that and multiply it by the length. So in my cuboid, that's the depth. And in this triangular prism, it would be whatever the length of that was. So that's essentially what I've done here. So I've done five times five to find my area times five because that's the depth. So the same rule applies and it's worth being familiar with using this equation. Okay, so let's have a look now at a pyramid. And actually a cone is a type of pyramid. So a pyramid is just a shape that goes upwards to a point. So my first pyramid is a rectangular shape that goes up to a point, and my second shape is a circle that goes up to a point. So they both actually follow the same rule. So the volume of a pyramid or cone is a third times the base area times the height. So, the base area is just the area of whatever the shape is at the bottom, and the height, as we learned in the last video, is from the bottom of the shape to the top. So it's easy to see in the cone, it's this dotted line here. Now the perspective of this pyramid is frankly awful due to my terrible drawing, but you can see I've tried to show that it's from the tip to the bottom of the shape. So don't be tempted to go for this side, because although it looks like it's going from the very top to the very bottom, actually, if you had this shape in three dimensional space, it would be the top of the shape to uh, the base line. So it's perpendicular to that, which I've tried to show with this little right angle there. Okay, so let's have a go at doing the pyramid. So it's a third times the base area 
So my area of the base is going to be a rectangle, so I'm going to do 5 times 4 times the height, which is 6. So a third times 5 times 4 is 20 times 6. And I'm going to grab my calculator. Okay, so I'm going to do a third. I'm going to put it in as a fraction or I can put it in as 20 times 6 divided by 3. Either's fine, whichever you prefer. But I'm going to pop it in as a fraction. So 1 third times 20 times 6. And that gives me my answer of 40 centimetres. Oops, uh, close enough. Centimetres cubed. So again, it's units cubed. Now let's look at the cone. So we've got a third times the base area. Now the base area of a cone is a circle. We've been given the radius up here, so we can find the area of that circle. So remember that the formula for calculating the area of a circle is pi r squared. So I'm gonna do pi times r squared. My r is three. There we go, r squared times my height, which is 10. So a third times, and here I'm going to have pi times 9 times 10. I'm going to write it out like that first. I'm going to go step by step, just so I don't make a silly mistake, because it happens. Okay, so pi times 9, pi times 9 is 28 point uh, 27, whatever times 10. So I'm just writing it like this, just as a rough thing, but I'm actually gonna leave it on the calculator screen. So what I can do now is I can do times 10 and then times a third. So I'm gonna do times a third. So I left the whole number on the calculator screen. I didn't take it off. And that gives me 94.2 and I'm gonna round it centimeter cubed. So that is the volume of the cone, which we can just treat like a pyramid. Okay. Now our last shape is this sphere down here. So the volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. So that means four thirds times pi times r cubed, where r is still my radius. So my radius of a sphere works exactly the same as my circle radius. So my radius is six. So that's six cubed. And I'm going to grab my calculator again. So I'm going to do my six cubed first. So I've got 4 thirds times pi times 6 cubed. So 6 cubed is 216. And I can then pop that into the calculator. So 216 times pi times 4 thirds. And remember when we're multiplying, it doesn't matter what order you put things in. So saying 4 thirds times pi times 216 is exactly the same as saying 216 times pi times 4 thirds. Okay, and I'm going to press equals. And that gives me, and again I'm going to round this to one decimal place. So 904.8 centimetres cubed. And that is my volume of a sphere. So there we've got four different shapes and thinking about prisms as well where we have found the volume of these shapes.